How goes it, folks? This is Ask the Roots. So I'm going to review Disturbing the Pieces' second compilation album, Disturbing the Peace. This is actually presented by Ludacris, and this project came out in 2005. In a lot of ways, this is kind of like a pseudo Ludacris album from 2005 because he didn't really do anything this year. It's highlighted by a number of singles. Some of them showed up elsewhere, but well, actually, most of them showed up elsewhere, but that's just kind of the concept of it. Well, all of them showed up elsewhere, but that's just kind of the thing. So, but I do feel like if you've seen my review from last September where I reviewed Ludacris's Disturbing the Peace album, Golden Grain, that one was a little bit more kind of ripe and just kind of more like wet behind the ears somewhat just because I kind of feel like Ludacris was just coming off of his success with word of mouth but it wasn't quite as comfortable as this project is I feel like Ludacris is definitely a lot more comfortable on this album and plus Golden Grain just did not have like a real mammoth hit single that it probably should have that was one of my main complaints about Golden Grain it was just the fact that it needed like a single that could have sold units. I think the single from that album was like the remix to Growing Pains, which is just not very attractive and didn't really add anything. And there needed, I mean, obviously Ludacris being the flagship artist behind Disturbing the Peace needed to pump out a single that was new. Something that I would have taken something, I would have definitely recommended something like Area Codes. Just a nice breezy summary song like that, but it didn't happen. But this album does have a hit single, and at least for a short while it was an exclusive to this project. And that just kind of happens to be the thing here. I mean, Ludacris is on here enough times. He's not overly abundantly on here like he was on Golden Grain. But there are some pretty quality cats on here and chicas on here that kind of do some music. And the Serving the Peace is a little bit more fleshed out this time than it was last time. Where I feel like, you know, I, I did, you know, some of the folks, Shauna was on there more last time. Lil Fate was on there more. I-20 was on there more. Play a Circle, those type folks. But now it's just kind of where more folks have more room to get shine and have just kind of evolved in a lot of ways. And some of these newer folks do pretty well also. It's just more of like an actual family affair this time than it was last time. Where it was just kind of introductory. Let's just kind of you know shots in the dark kind of thing so i'll go ahead and talk about the singles the first single was georgia and this has Ludacris and field mob on here like i like this song but i kind of have yeah georgia has field mob and jamie fox on the hook i i like this song but there's a re there's a new version of this song that's been around for at least like the past several years. I don't like it as much as the original Georgia. The original Georgia, which the reason why they had to re-record it is just because the the sample that the song came from, they changed their mind or something like that about it. And they didn't want that version of the song out, which I don't know why that was. I mean, especially if Ludacris had the money, I don't know what the big deal was about doing that. But the original version of that song is better. I mean, if I had to say, like, if you can find the 2005 edition of this album, I would get that one. But I just don't like the revamped version. This is this kind of happens sometimes. This also happened with T.I.'s Let's Get Away off of his Trap Music album, which I really thoroughly dislike the new Let's Get Away. The old Let's Get Away by T.I. is better, but I just kind of feel like... It's kind of one of those proclamations about it where I, I don't know if I would recommend this song as much just because Jamie Foxx on the original version of Georgia just did it so much better. But it is a good song. And I would have to say Ludacris completely demolishes the verse. And this is just a classic kind of, it, it felt it feels like a Ludacris song, but it's actually like a Disturbing the Peace song because Field Mob's on here. But it's just a nice flagship Ludacris single as like an interim point for what he was up to in 2005 after the promotional run for red light district kind of dried up i think that's just kind of the concept he was also introducing field mob who he would continue to collaborate with and they did do an album in early 2006 where you can find this song on the 2006 album like light poles and pine trees or something like that so this is kind of the thing but even on that album they revamped it also so it's you want the original version of georgia it just kind of happens to be a thing, but it is a nice kind of, it is kind of a club cut, I would have to say. It's just a nice kind of pretty central vanilla kind of club cut. This is a nice one to kind of hear in night venues and that type of stuff. This kind of has like that sprawling kind of feel. Jamie Foxx really delivers a pretty powerful hook on here, and that just kind of happens to be a thing about it, but it's just such a, 
I mean, I feel like this was a rather popular Ludacris song around 2005, 2006. It really got actually quite a bit of plays, but it's just kind of, it's just, it really feels like a Ludacris song. But it's just kind of a factory made kind of vanilla club song. So it's there for it, if, especially if you can find the original version. Uh, the second single, the second single is the only appearance of Shauna on this project, which is kind of disappointing, but it's called Getting Some, which is Getting Some Head. And Shauna, this was originally, this was, the, it, it makes more sense for this to be the kickoff single. The, it makes more sense for this to be the kickoff single, the Shauna's album, just because it it really felt like she kind of got screwed over into not being more than a one hit wonder unfortunately but the concept of it was is this is such a powerful hit single it just seemed natural to just give it to shauna and get out the album and really if you know about shauna i would definitely recommend her 2006 album block music because that has some gems on there and it's definitely full of summer ass shaking kind of tunes in there just for some good times it definitely just works in that sort of sense but shauna's got a nice hit single here really kind of catchy too short hook and just an overall kind of crunchy summer tune it's just really meant for like any sort of night venue and that type of stuff this really comes off with some great energy shauna's pretty seductive and charismatic in her verses so she does a nice job shauna really needed more songs like this I, I mean it was kind of tricky i said this before that it's kind of tricky as to how she would have been able to top this song but i definitely think like some other she could have came up with more sex songs to kind of have done and stuff i definitely think that there probably could have been something like torque and this a torque song you know city girls has songs like torculator and that type of stuff she could have come up with something but good hit and then supposedly i don't know about the promotional cycle of this single but supposedly the third single from disturbing the peace was uh two miles an hour the remix now this is basically the same song this is basically the same song by Ludacris. i mean Ludacris's part in the verse is the same as it was on the red light district album i kind of wish that he would have done something new with it it might have actually been a charting single if Ludacris had added a brand new verse on here and made it a little bit more original but it does have play a circle that's the that's the new part of the song is titty boy and dollar boy are on here from play a circle and if you don't know titty boy is two chains so uh yeah just the play a circle are on here and that's it two miles an hour is a pretty hit single this is definitely like a real slow creep kind of song i can even see this being played in night venues it just has such a mellow kind of woozy kind of orchestral kind of energy in a lot of ways so this is a pretty nice one for just cruising around especially this good kind of summary kind of late night summary kind of energy but even in the afternoon it's good for that sort of thing so it's just a nice one to kind of have nice nightclub kind of song there's 14 songs on here if you scratch the three skits on here so i'm going to go ahead and talk about the 10 songs or the eight and a half songs that i recommend to you out of 10 so those eight songs would be georgia table dance sweet revenge DTP for Life, Two Miles an Hour Remix, That's My Shit, You Ain't Got Enough, and I'll Be Around. And the two almost songs would be Break a Nigga Off and Getting Some Head. So basically, to kind of talk about these, I feel like a real kind of turbulent highlight would be Sweet Revenge by Ludacris. This is exactly why Ludacris needed more songs on this album. It's just because this is just a highlight like i had heard this beat before apparently chameleon air rapped to this beat on his mixtape messiah mixtape and i didn't realize that that song was from this beat so that's kind of one i thought that was an original i thought that was an original chameleon air cut but this is actually this is actually a song by Ludacris. it's a pretty powerful one it's just a nice kind of slinky kind of night venue type song this really works in that sort of sense Ludacris is talking about macking with some women and that type of stuff definitely works for that sort of sense this is a nice kind of uh the keys on the song sweet revenge are really kind of like infectious in a lot of ways they just have like a real nice energy towards it this is definitely one this is a good example of Ludacris. this is kind of some secret batch of Ludacris songs from 2005 because this is not really red light district era Ludacris, but it's also not release therapy era Ludacris either so it's just kind of interesting kind of get this that Ludacris was so comfortable this was able to do these punch lines and this is still kind of when Ludacris had the braids and his hair and stuff so this is kind of more braids era Ludacris, just that kind of crunchy kind of vibe about getting some women that are pissed off with their boyfriends and that type of stuff this would have to kind of say it's just like a good emphasis as far as trying to get like some nice 
kind of crunchy kind of club cuts from Ludacris. It, he definitely needed more songs in this album, I would have to say. But there is another one, DTP for Life, which has I-20 and Lil Fate on here also. This is kind of a, uh, yeah, DTP for Life is a nice back room kind of club cut. I feel like if the club's large enough where there's multiple rooms in it and you've got enough room to kind of mingle and kind of have more room where you're not just in front of everybody and that type of stuff, this is definitely kind of more like a back room kind of club song. Definitely kind of has like that nice kind of slinky energy. This might even be a VIP song. I just would have to say it's not really like a dance club kind of song, like something like you know, Usher's Monster or something like that, or Oh My God or something like that. I just kind of feel like it's just a nice one. It's definitely a club cut, but it's just not one in the sense of like dancing, kind of booty shaking kind of music in a lot of ways. That's just kind of one. Like I said, the Two Miles an Hour remix is a nice one. Table Dance is a really good one. A pretty powerful, a pretty powerful highlight for this project would definitely be Bobby Valentino's table dance with smoke from field mob and little fate this is definitely a nice highlight this one just feels like a pretty summery ready summer evening kind of strip club song if it's not for if you're not in the strip club listening to this sort of song just listen to the women wind on like the poles and that type of stuff i would definitely have to say that this just works as like a nice hazy kind of summer energy it's kind of in your backyard as the sun sets that sort of thing this kind of works in like a pretty nice sense it's just kind of good kind of mojito and kind of corona beer kind of energy as far as that kind of goes smoke session that type of stuff especially with women around that's my shit is a regular nightclub kind of song this is a re kind of stock factory made nightclub kind of song this has a regular kind of beat on there just good for a night out and it's a posse song so it has field mob and play a circle who both have groups of two and then another cat on here named perfect harmony and then Ludacris is on the song so it's just there's six verses on the song this kind of works as like a nice kind of club cut and like a posse sense so it's good to kind of get that these are some nice ones from Ludacris I did like you ain't got enough this is where two chains and dollar boy kind of take the wheel this is one of the few play a circle songs on here that i think it's like the only play a circle song that they did they, they needed a few more songs but this one is a pretty fancy kind of orchestral kind of song on here it just really feels like a nice east coast kind of beat just in a nightclub sense perfect little fancy nightclub kind of tune like east coast definitely something that like cameron would do or someone like that i'm trying to think of a few more cats like that like ghostface killer one of those type dudes something of that sense but it's just kind of odd just because it's not the typical thing i mean the the play a circle album that i reviewed not too long ago did not have cuts like this so it's just kind of interesting to kind of have them on some east coast kind of vibes when they're typically more in like the atlanta sound but it is it was a nice fit very graceful and then I'll Be Around, I didn't know about this chick, but apparently Ludacris had another R&B act on Disturbing the Peace besides Bobby B, and that was Sharifa. So Sharifa is a chick that dropped an album in 2006, but she has another fancy kind of graceful song on here too. I mean, her, she kind of, it's, it's not necessarily a club song, it's just kind of a more night out kind of song. Maybe you're shopping for clothes, just going out on a date night, that sort of thing, but it's just very graceful. It just feels like a Dawn Cannon kind of beat. One of those kind of brassy kind of Don Cannon beats that you've probably heard on mixtapes, but this is very fancy and graceful, kind of has some elegance towards it, but it definitely just feels like a date night for a night out, and it's just kind of in an R&B sense, so it's good that Sharifa kind of did that. Yeah, it, this is really her only appearance on here. I would have liked to have seen more from Sharifa. The thing about this album, Disturbing the Peace, is most of these folks on here only really drop one song, like... Ludacris only has one solo song, Sharifa only has one song, Bobby Valentino's only on here once, Shauna's only on here once, Play a Circle are on here multiple times, but in terms of like their own song, they're only on here once. There's just a lot of folks that just only drop one gem, and sometimes you like these songs and you wish that they kind of would have dropped another one. Like I definitely feel like Bobby V needed to be on here a second time, as did Shauna. I would have liked another song like Sweet Revenge from Ludacris. Lil Fate definitely needed another song. And, you know, just stuff like that. And I-20 didn't really even get a song either. So I'm surprised that he didn't. But yeah, to kind of talk about some, some more of these, like the two almost songs. So basically the reason why Getting Some Head is an almost song is because you might as well just get it on Shauna's album. That's the album I would get it just because you can get a good taste of Shauna besides just that song because she's only on here once i would it's not an exclusive so i would have said if it would have been an exclusive to this album 
I would have recommended getting some, but because it's on Shauna's album, you might as well just get Shauna's album. But an almost song that I was kind of on the fence about was Break a Nigga Off, which is by Lil Fate and has Rich Boy, which is surprising, and then Gangsta Boo, rest in peace. So uh, Break a Nigga Off has some morning Waffle House kind of vibe, just kind of woozy, kind of morning kind of feels towards it. It's kind of almost like a hustle song, but it's just kind of more slinky in a sense of just trying to get some women and that type of stuff, Gangsta Boo trying to get a man for her and that type of thing. It's just kind of one of those woozy kind of cuts that just feels like, you know, just breakfast at Waffle House, maybe a little bit hungover, that type of stuff, trying to punch through your phone and find a woman to get and that sort of thing, just that sort of concept. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the appeal of this song is just how lackadaisical and pedestrian it kind of is. That's why I like some of these little fake cuts is because he never dropped an album and he... I mean, he could have dropped like a pretty rickety and kind of menacing club cut on here, but he just chose kind of more work a day and kind of lackadaisical, kind of just everyday kind of cut and that sort of thing. It was just good to kind of get that just for like Waffle House type feels and just kind of slinky, kind of flirtatious kind of vibes about it. And I just think that's a nice one. But the reason why it's an almost song is because there's these kind of like, there's something in the song that kind of has like this. I don't know if it's like horns, but it just kind of has like this r weird part of the production. Yeah, it has like some horns that kind of go through most of the verse or just, uh, uh, you know, it has that kind of noise on there and it's just not very catchy and I feel like it detracts from the beat. I feel like this song is an acquired taste. Like this song is an acquired taste. I don't think every single person who hears this song is going to immediately like it. It's just more of an acquired taste. You may like it, especially if you kind of like these kind of morning and kind of getting fucked up, but still getting laid throughout the day, just in a workaday kind of field type vibes towards it. But it's just not an immediate highlight like Sweet Revenge or Georgia or Getting Some Head, Two Miles an Hour Remix or even Table Dance, some of those. It's just kind of more you have to get used to it kind of feels. So that's why I kind of picked it as an almost song. But yeah, so to talk about this, so me liking basically eight and a half, two almost songs, eight songs I did enjoy. I kind of feel like I'm going to give this album eight out of 14 plus the two almost songs. I'm going to give this album like a 7.75 .7 out of 10. I feel like that's good enough just to kind of be able to say seven, at least seven highlights, which is half the project, and then the two almost songs. I just feel like a seven. Actually, I'll give it a seven and a half. I'll give it a seven and a half out of ten. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my score of seven point seven five. I feel like that's good enough just to be able to say seven point seven five out of ten. Talk about some of the songs I didn't like. Like some of these were just kind of bad. Like some of these artists that didn't really have like as much star power. I feel like like the Norfolk. I don't know who that was, but that was just I I kind of liked the beat, but this wasn't catchy enough, and I felt like it probably needed someone like Lil Fate or Titty Boy, or Dollar Boy on there, someone like that, or I-20, and Come See Me really had a pretty terrible beat, and it was kind of a bad song to put Stat Quo on, who was kind of on Shady Records at the time, I think that one, that was probably one of the worst beats on here, and, uh, like, Family Affair was too lengthy, and I didn't really like the, I mean, this is another kind of East Coast sounding beat, but it just didn't pull it off as well as, like, uh, the uh you ain't got enough songs that one was just kind of bad look too long too many rappers on here i think they should have shortened it or shortened the verses something like that and then blood in the air i just didn't like the kind of rap rock feel towards it i mean i do like rap rock songs but there just weren't enough notable rappers on here to really have much justification of it so but yeah so 7.75 out of 10 the social score i'll go ahead and give like a 7 out of 10 just because i feel like there are some highlights on here there's definitely some nice ones but I do feel like some of these are kind of an acquired taste. And if you're just looking for more secret ludicrous songs, he is on here. But it's just kind of not as dominant as it is on like a ludicrous album. I mean, you just have to kind of search for like the ones from him. I mean, he's on Georgia. He's on Sweet Revenge. He's on DTP for life. But ludicrous is kind of peppered in. And he's just kind of expecting you to more mess with like the disturbing the peace collective more so than just being centrally here for him if you're just here for ludicrous you're not going to be as gallantly impressed as much you're not going to be as gallantly satisfied as you would if you just like the fact if you like most of these folks as is kind of the thing but yeah bobby valentino's not on here enough sean is not on here enough 
play a circle probably could have been on here more little fate could have been on here more there's, there's just plenty of these situations so i do feel like the power behind it there are a lot of quality cuts on here and this is kind of in underneath that but it just doesn't quite have is this the, it, this album is just going to leave you hungry so when you like a certain song you're just going to want more of it but then they kind of do that there's at least enough quality on here to dictate purchasing it but it's just kind of that most of these folks just kind of give you one or two songs at most from each particular artist that you would like so that's just kind of the thing but so seven social 7.75 score in terms of the future ludicrous has been gone since 2015 and hasn't really ludicrous has been gone since 2015 so he hasn't really done anything in almost 10 years but the thing about it was is there was originally going to be a third disturbing the peace album in 2007 and i forget what that one was called but chingy was supposed to be on there it was just supposed to be like a pretty large affair that type stuff i think ludicrous actually dropped a couple singles for it in 2007 if i can find that floating around that unreleased album or something i might eventually review that but other than that there's not really much of a future as far as like the ludicrous kind of candor or the ludicrous kind of camp kind of goes but we'll get some more of these reviews belted out